It's what I should be doing. Uh, but I need to make this last push uh, so we can get this Kickstarter over the, the top for this $15,000 goal where we get our nice Josh Howard uh, pinup, which is what I really, really want out of the book. And I'd really love to get to the bookmarks at $17,500 also this, ne this next week if it's possible. So um, I'm going to continue my typical uh, spiel, which I do, uh, which I've done the last few times here. Uh, welcome, everybody uh, who's on Periscope, Facebook Live, YouTube. Hit the like button, by the way. Hit the little heart button on Periscope over and over and over again. Get it, get the algorithm going. Share this stuff with your friends. The whole point of this is to be able to share this uh, with friends uh, so that new people see this and maybe can discover the book. I'm going to continue uh, what I've done the last uh, couple uh, streams I've done by myself. Hey, Bianca, welcome. Um, which is to uh, go over the uh, a single issue of Flying Sparked uh, and, and kind of the detail of it. Uh, in depth, like a commentary track or something like that as we read it. So I did this with the first issue, the second issue, and I'll do the third today. This uh, will be the entire first volume. Um, so if you guys have read that, uh, this will give some depth to it. If not, uh, I'll go over the first two parts right now. Uh, the beginning of Flying Sparks, we have, uh, for those who aren't familiar, it's a uh, hero and villain dating under their secret identities, kind of like a Romeo and Juliet of superheroes sort of deal. And it's a um, so it's superhero first, and I'd say romance second. Uh, I think uh, some folk uh, kind of give it the wrong impression, thinking it's a big big time romance book. And I think it's it's a component of it, but it's definitely superhero first. Um, and it focuses on the two characters about evenly. I try I try to split the uh, each issue up so that, so each character has their own thing to do, and it they kind of have their own storyline going through the issues there. Uh, you know, one takes lead one issue, one takes lead the next issue, and it goes back and forth a, li a little more uh, between the A and B plots there. But this is the campaign. It's on Kickstarter, and uh, it's comprised of volumes one through three. So I'm talking about issues one through three. That's volume one. Each volume has three issues in it. So this is something a lot of people, no one really does this. Uh, they, 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 this is direct to graphic novel, basically. Um, and so you're getting 66 pages of comic. You, 72 pages, 73 pages by the time it's all said and done with all the extras. Um, and then uh, then, then uh, some stretch goals also, which give you some extra comics too. We've hit the $12,000 stretch goal, which is going to give everybody Flying Sparks number zero. Um, flying Sparks zero. Let's see if I've got the cover of this uh, somewhere here. Hey, Steve, welcome, my man. Um, let's see. Cover. I don't know. Let me see if I can find the cover for Flying Sparks number zero. Jethro did a beautiful job of this. And I I can't find it. My files are so poorly organized. Oh, here we go. Here we go. It's beautiful. It says it's syncing. I don't want it to sync. I want it to download. Open. Open. There we go. Um, so this is a, a very super heroic pose. I haven't added lettered yet, so it doesn't have all the, the uh, you know, it's going to have the logo right here. And, then, and uh, it's, it cuts you off here, so it really is more like that. All right, really nice rendition of uh, Chloe flying, uh, super epic, and uh, and and well done there, uh, enjoyable stuff. So this will be the Flying Spark Zero cover. Um, all backers are getting this for free as a digital edition, and we'll put out a print version on Amazon uh, pretty shortly. But it's going to comprise of three short stories, which are uh, Hannah's story, which was a proof of concept I did with uh, with Jethro first, which is uh, a a prequel where we go see Chloe's roommate's life and kind of what she does and get a little better glimpse at her. Then it's got um, Metagirl's origin, which is which is a, a four page story just of her first attempts at using her uh, anti gravity ellipses boots to help her fly. She's she doesn't have power; she has gadgets. And the third one is Metagirl and Dynamite Thor, uh, where they um, you know are do their thing um, and fight. So, uh, and then I've got all these like character bios that I'm going to put in the back too, which, which go in depth into all the characters, very pretty stuff. And that will uh, be the Flying Sparks zero issue when it comes out. Good stuff right there. So we're trying to get this going um, and trying to push this to 15,000 so we can get um, the Josh uh, Howard pin up. Josh Howard is the creator of T-Bird and Throttle, great friend of mine. Beautiful artist. Um, I'm calling him one of the top 10 comic artists of all time. So, yeah, deal with that. 
Um, but yeah, I definitely want his pin up in the back of the book because he does beautiful work and uh, definitely want to want to hit that goal if we can. So this is the campaign. Um, I, I started to describe this for new folk. Uh, we, we have a beautiful uh, alternative cover by Miss Sashi. These are limited to the campaign. So uh, once I print these, these are gone and I just don't do these again. I just do a special like special thing for, for the Kickstarter backers where it's that. And uh, this is the main cover. Another superhero deal, deal by uh, Julia Sabrera. This actually is, is part of one of the scenes in Flying Spark Volume 3 where she's breaking through in a window and, and getting into uh, some trouble here. And it's good stuff. Um, yeah, so this is the comic. It's a, it's a superhero comic. The story so far for Volume 1, or, I'm sorry, Issues 1 and 2, before we get into our Issue 3 analysis here, what universe does Flying Sparks take in uh, place in uh, the sort of MCU crossover. It takes place in the Ethnoverse, of course. It's the uh, it's it's the Ethnoverse. It's the name of it. <laughs> I thought it trigger some people. All right. Um, so uh, yeah, it's 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 just my own deal. I've got um. Uh, this is a co question on YouTube for for people who uh, are following on Facebook or or whatever. I see all the comments, but you may not see the comments depending on what platform you're on. Um, but yeah, I've got I've got a whole superhero setup going on. I've got actually four different uh, heroes in it. Yeah, you guys like that? <laughs> oh man, I'm so funny. I crack me up. Um, but uh, we've got four different uh, heroes going right now. We've got uh, well, not right now. I, I I do. You haven't seen them yet. But we've got uh, Flying Sparks with Metagirl, and we've got um, and this isn't counting Meta Man. I guess if Meta Man makes five, but he doesn't have his own book right now except for that one. Um, we'll have a, um, uh, one called dynamite Thor. That's going to be probably crowdfunding in like November. Uh, we'll have one called uh, the cosmic and he's, his, his deals, he's immune to explosives. Um, and we'll have the cosmic warrior, which is my like cosmic adventure sort of deal. Uh, it'll be a much grander scale than we're seeing with flying sparks. It'll be, uh, you know, sort of a saving the earth against alien sort of thing. <laughs> nice thing, Steve. <laughs> Um, and then those will, those will be my three books I'm, I'm promoting right now. I've got, I've got an issue of one called Pistol Whipped, which is about some vigilantes uh, living in San Francisco. And uh, that is a Patreon exclusive right now, uh, as I don't really have uh, the art for a follow-up issue on that. I'm not, I'm not sure they're just going to come back on that, so I, I don't know how far that'll go. Um, let's see. Uh, so that's, yeah, so that's my verse right now, I guess, Uh what it is and and uh they all kind of flow together we are going to be doing some crossovers coming up um we're talking about a, a couple more um and with some people uh, but but those are those are not happening right away so i'll, I'll leave those uh, alone for now so issue one issue one just establish the characters we have johnny he's a super villain he has uh he has uh electricity shock powers uh that he has he's a mobster he's a uh he, he's a fence he tries. He has a, a fake business where he runs a coffee shop, uh, where he's got his buddy Paul helping him out, and they get into some criminal activity. Uh, Meta Girl is a college student by day. Um, she's working with a professor who's like a mad scientist inventor, and he's inventing all this cool stuff for her to try out, and she's using it for her good stuff. Um, they uh, in the first issue, uh, Johnny and Chloe are dating, and uh, she's kind of getting, I guess Johnny gets annoyed because she's, you know, says she's always going off studying or whatever, when she's really going out to be meta girl and, and saving the city from danger. Uh, but she lies to him about it. Johnny gets that vibe that she's lying to him about it. And um, she, he doesn't like that. Um, and then Johnny, uh, when she actually comes around to come hang out, uh, runs off to do a little weird business venture where there's a stolen painting involved. Um, he, uh, Ends up the twist is that uh, the painting that was stolen was the was by the property of the person who was trying to sell it to. So the guy freaked out. Johnny is forced to reveal that he has powers, um, murders a guy, which is his first murder, and uh, and then steals this like alien ruby thing from the guy, which the alien ruby is very important as it goes along. Issue two we read last time, and that introduces a bad guy called the Big Strong. He's just a big strong guy. Um, and he's like, he's like a Hulk or a doomsday or, or whatever. And he just like rampages through the city. And, uh, he's trying to get revenge on this guy, Peter Buxton, who we met in issue one, who is a CEO and, and, a, a all around bad dude of this technologies company. 
uh, and he's you know, the the company works on uh, bio stuff and and just you know random tech stuff. And um, he uh, the CEO just like has everything he wants and does all his villaining because he wants to get a thrill out of things. So uh, so that's that's what he does. He stole the painting because he wanted to get a thrill out of things. And then uh, we see in issue two, he's getting attacked by this guy. Uh, Johnny reveals that there's the alien Ruby um, happening. Um, and uh, Buxton's pretty interested in this alien Ruby by the end of it. Um, on the other front, uh, Chloe gets the crap beat out of her because it's her first real supervillain fight uh, against uh, somebody with real powers. And she just cannot handle that as Meta Girl. She does not have the capability to deal with that yet. I try to start my characters out. This is where I, this is where I always tell people. I try to start out like at like level zero level one um as best as i can because i i feel like you know once you hit that peak of like we're saving the world and we're so badass it's hard to create like a compelling uh narrative from there uh and i think i, I mean i did that in justified i had a character who starts off pretty badass and then he saves the world but i like having it like peter parker like in the first couple issues of spider-man he didn't know what he was doing you know i mean he was like barely able to stick to the walls and things like that and that's where chloe's out as meta girl in these first couple of issues she really does not know what she's doing as a superhero she's not a mary sue like you like you said big steve um she is like a real person trying to figure out how to do it she'll get better with experience you know i just like me you know i'm writing and as as each one of these issues goes by each one of them gets better because i'm a become a better writer like i didn't know what i was doing in the first issue and uh, and I and and by the sixth issue, I really know what I'm doing, right? So you know, this is how her character arc's going. Also, it's very uh, very much what I have planned. And uh, by volume five, you know, I I think she'll uh, she'll she'll really have the hang of this stuff. But there's a lot of drama stuff going on too with the relationship. Um, so there's just a lot to go go on here. Um, so she gets beaten pretty bad. She ends up in the hospital in volume two, or in issue two. Sorry, I keep I'm. Uh, chapter two, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is all volume one, just to be clear. And uh, then we start with issue three. Now, issue three, um, uh, I got a, uh, I got a, a comment that I was not very good at uh, putting, you know, the location of things in, uh, in volume one. I've been very careful about that since then. So we start out University of Southern California. This is USC. It's a real college, um, and this is actually a real building on campus there uh, that that uh, that we put into the book. Um, I'm not a fan of USC. Um, I went to Cal, and they're definitely our football rivals. So, uh, but I went down there uh, quite often during my college years uh, because uh, you know we we'd play them in football and basketball, and the girls down there were way way prettier than um, than we have at Berkeley. Got it. Got to say. So, uh, so it was always a good weekend when I went down there. All right. So, uh, so here we go. Um, so we start out and I just kind of give a recap. I, I was going to put these out as, as single issues at first. Um, and then I realized like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going balls to the wall and doing full graphic novels just so you get as much story as possible when you back my books. So definitely back the books. You get as much story as, as physically possible. When you come out here, this is this is uh, this storyline's there. And by the way, the Kickstarter has all three volumes. You'll you can get nine issues of comics right away. It's still it's an ongoing series. It's that you can you can get it right now. It's really cool. Hey, Derpinator, welcome. Um, and here we go. So they're talking about the alien crystal, and uh, we've got some device that the professor's going out uh, on right now. And we see Chloe and Johnny are hanging out as they're checking out the crystal. And uh, he's turned it into like some sort of gun thing. The alien crystal acts as like a battery. It's got some power pack to it. Um, and it's uh, it's got unlimited power. And uh, we see that uh, Johnny's pretty comfortable with, with gun type devices. And uh, Chloe's not very comfortable with them. That's uh, Of course, Johnny is because he's a mobster. And Chloe's just a college student girl, so she's probably not done this. So he's uh, he's, he's telling her to, to pull the trigger here. And she does. Um, really the only reason this exists was I was, I was writing this and I was like, I want a dang ray gun in my book. So, um, th that, that, that's, that's what happened. I was like, I want a ray gun, dang it. Um, and so I got a ray gun. Um, and that was, <laughs> that was the entire purpose of writing this. Um, you know, I'm a simple guy. What can I say? So as you see, the ray gun's very powerful. It's good stuff. Um, and they discuss it and then somebody's at the door. What's going on? 
Uh, nobody should be here, says the professor. And we have our MOOC bad guys uh, make their way in. So um, I start off with a pretty compelling thing. We got a cool ray gun that hasn't seen before with some cool action right here. And then we go right into conflict and drama. Um, and then uh, here's, here's some of the fun drama that always goes on between these two. Um, Chloe thinks she's a superhero. And Johnny thinks, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a bad, you know, bad guy with, uh, with mob powers, think they're with powers. So I got to protect my girl. And he's a classic, very classic kind of guy. She's always thinking, I got to protect him. Uh, but so it's uh, it creates a little conflict as they go back and forth here and uh, the super villain or the villains uh, go off on that too. So they steal the ray gun and then uh, Johnny uh, is like, okay, I could have done something. And then, you know, Chloe's mad because she's like, you could have got killed. And he tells him to stay there. He's going to go get the gun back. All right. So they get in the van here. Um, and uh, I like the lighting effects here uh, that the colorist did. Pretty good. This is a simpler issue in a lot of ways than the issue two because I was still setting up a lot with the Meta Man and and all that uh, going on here, and this really just uh, is it comes down to a car chase, um, and that's what goes on here. And uh, yeah, so we reveal right here that Mr. Buxton will be pleased. So we learn that Mr. Buxton is actually the one doing the stealing here, uh, and then of course people are going to be like, "Why is Mr. Buxton stealing this when Johnny's like sharing this information with him?" Well, that comes out later. Um, so Johnny goes off after him anyway. We get a car chase. Chloe, uh, this is one of my favorite shots of Meta Girl right here. Um, I think this is just beautiful. She's putting her boots on. Uh, I've got a nice nice leg shot here. Just looks phenomenal. Looks like my wife, uh, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, that's why I dig it. So, um, so she and the professor talk about Johnny and, and the professor's like, Hey, you know, he doesn't know that you do this. So he's just trying to act in your best interest and kind of, he's kind of explaining that and uh, then gets her boots all tuned up so she can go out and fly after them too. Uh, back to the car chase, this pure action car chase. This was really fun. Uh, watching it as this art came in, we just have, we got the mooks firing guns out the back, shooting bullets. Johnny's not impervious to bullets. So that's a, that's a very frightening scene for him. He chases after him. Like I said, it's just a car chase, so it's pure action throughout this issue, which is which is what I wanted to get the book more uh, focused on uh, once we got to issue three, because uh, issue one had a lot of exposition to it. Issue two had you know some exposition to it, and I just wanted to just boom, 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 action, scary action, and here we go. Uh, and Johnny is uh, is tr struggling for control of the car after his, his wheel gets shot out. But he, and uh, he goes, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to use my powers. And he tries to, but they're out of range. Um, and so, yeah, this, this first series, you know, I set up the, the heroes, both of our guys. Hey, uh, David, welcome. Um, and I, I set up the heroes. I mean, they're, they're really failing a lot in these two issues. You, you see Metagirl fail in her first battle and fail in her first super battle. Then Johnny's really struggling with his uh, business and, and ends up having to kill a guy because he screws up. Um, and that leads to this whole thing. And then Johnny can't really get things going here. He can't uh, fix it after this. Loses control of his car, and he's stuck. He's mad, and he's like, I'm going to get these people because, you know, he's, he's got a little bit of a hot streak. He really does not like being betrayed. He doesn't like being screwed with, and he'll come after you. And that's, that's the type of guy who Johnny is. And we see that a lot more. Volume 3, when he gets in this mob stuff, guys, uh, we see that Johnny is like, this is like, a descent into darkness, right? So the first issue, like he'd never killed anyone before. Now he's like, you know, out for revenge. Uh, he's getting madder and madder. And and as this goes on, uh, he really he really falls prey to this like I got to get revenge uh, sort of mentality. I got to send these people a message, teach them a lesson. And that's that's really Johnny's honor code. He's he's more of a he's a villain, but he's an honorable villain. Um, whereas Peter Buxton is just a uh, you know he's he's like the um, uh, uh, agent of chaos kind of kind of villain so we've got got a very good foil uh, on that on that point right there um i wanted to break up some of this because i i'm like we just had a car chase and it's boom 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 and then we're going to get into this a little more um so i wanted to break it up with some uh slice of life coffee action i i put a few uh because they got their coffee shop that's a big part of this I, I put a few panels of this in every issue uh for things and we see that hannah is getting cut off from her credit cards, from her parents. This is like, you know, the, the dialogue I wrote to be boom, boom, boom. It's very witty banter back and forth. And um, and 
it uh, it's just keep it going along and, ha and have a little fun with that. So this is the comic relief right here as we get back into it. Metagirl's flying, beautiful flying shot by Jethro. She's flying through the city. Look at look at how this is laid out. Like we we see that she's at USC. She's flying. We see the city and see how the eye just like flows to this. And even though she's only drawn once, it, it definitely shows the movement uh, as she's going through things. And then she catches something and she sees, oh gosh, that's Johnny. And she almost flew down there and let him know her secret. And this is where um, this is where that tension comes into play between the two. Because she's like, dang it, I can't can't get too close to him because of that. Johnny's coming back. Uh, he wants Paul's help because he now has crashed his car. Um, and uh, Paul says he's going to join him. And uh, then we leave Hannah with uh, control of the shop. And uh, this is uh, this is where that gag paid off because uh, she was getting her credit card stuff taken care of. She needs her money for shopping because she's she's a you know vapid person like that. And then she's hanging out in here. Paul's like, all right. Here's your job starting right now. Um, and this is a classic, like, cartoony uh, version of her where she's, you know, I love this face right here. Very funny. Uh, and Who Boy is uh, is very, like, 80s, uh, you know, sort of way of, uh, of finishing that right there. Um, it's uh, something, those are, those, are, uh, those are words that uh, Tom DeFalco would use a lot in his, uh, his comics, which is why I use that specifically. All right, so the van's pulling into this warehouse. There's security guards. Mr. Buxton is inspecting you. The guys are pulling this out. Like I said, this this issue is just like pretty fast paced. So um, it's compared to the other two, which are very dense in in the story. This one just like really pushes that car chase along. Uh, we we hit the beats of Johnny and Chloe's relationship intentionally, and then we hit that comic relief spot as uh, so we get into this spot. Um, so this is it. Do you have a payment? Let me see it. Here we go. He gets it, and we see Buxton is a, a, a nut job based, based on this. And, of course, how is he going to repay the guys who helped him out? <laughs> he blasts them uh, because that's what a good villain does. So he just he's just doing this for the sake of being a villain. And I actually answer the question because it's like, why don't you work with Johnny? Why do you need to steal it? I figured that was a very important question because uh, – and if I didn't put that in dialogue – I felt like uh, I was doing the readers a disservice here. Uh, so I, I want to be very clear that, like, yes, he worked with Johnny. And uh, and this is where we, we learn that he's just a nut job because you don't understand the thrill of the game. Besides, Professor Fish would never cooperate in exploiting this technology for his true power. He thinks so small, but I think big. Uh, very very uh, narcissistic, grandiose villain right there. And uh, it shows his, uh, his motivations is just the thrill of it. It's very exciting. Um, and so there we go. Um, that's that issue. We get back to Johnny's place. Johnny's got a high rise condo. That's pretty swanky, uh, compared to Chloe's, uh, little place. And, uh, he's, he's actually got a little loft, uh, with some stairs up to a little room up there. Pretty cool stuff. He's got a bar over here, TV. And, uh, so Johnny, uh, so Johnny, uh, his, his, uh, his, uh, electrical powers, uh, leave him extremely sweaty is, is something that I wanted to establish here that, that there was actually something more to the powers. Cause I, it always bothers me. Uh, that like you know electro or whatever in spider-man it's like you know he's he's heating up all this electricity but like he never sweats or like i mean a person would get like super sweaty uh in that uh, they'd have some major problems with their lives maybe even singe their their arm hair off and things like that um unless they had some weird immunity to it i don't know but they never described that so i thought you know what he'd get real sweaty so he'd just like want to just like hop in the shower right away after this sort of thing when he's using it in a stressful situation he also wants some time to think about things because Paul, uh, at this point, uh, is saying that uh, is betraying that he knows a little more than he lets on, and uh, and wants to get involved in the criminal activity side of things because he is a go getter and he sees that Johnny's making good money, right here. There's good money. Paul wants a little piece of that action, and so Johnny has to do that. I also wanted to just uh, troll my readers. I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm here to troll you, um, and so I'm like, what would be cheesier? Than me doing a whole page of a naked dude just to troll you. <laughs> I shit you not. That's the, that was the whole reason I did this. Um, and uh, I thought it was very really funny uh, to just have a dude popping out of a shower and just Johnny be naked for several pages uh, because I I know that you probably want that uh, from uh, from this here uh, and not from this here. <laughs> so I just thought it was funny. Um, so we have a shower scene. <laughs> For the hell of it. Oh, man. I, I crack myself up. I'm not going to lie. 
Um, I don't care if anybody else finds it funny. Like I do everything just for me to laugh. Like that's my whole point. Um, I knew, I know that everybody wants the cheesecake meta girl stuff and we provide that we got, we got a body pillow for you after all. Um, but yeah, of course I, I throw this in here just, just cause of that. And then, uh, Johnny's got a towel up over his head implying what <laughs> he's, he's rolling out there and just like and putting on a show for everybody. All right. Um, so I like to bring things full circle. I think a good uh, part of writing is bringing things full circle. You you set something up at the beginning and you bring it back. And if you remember in the first issue, uh, this was the butler um, who um, was uh, uh, that Johnny went to the guy's house uh, where he fried the guy. And the butler got is out for revenge too. So you know Johnny gets his his piece, and then this guy gets his piece, and the revenge cycle just keeps going. Is is how this goes. This is the circular ending. I brought it here. I brought back issue one into issue three, so that we have like a complete volume uh, that feels like things are going on. And uh, of course, um, there will be a retribution for your sins. Uh, of course, I left it at a cliffhanger here because this is exactly I I, sp I spit this volume right here. Uh, you know, so you'd pick up volume two. So you don't know what's going to happen with Johnny. He is in a situation where he's uh, got Paul hostage. He's hostage. Uh, this bad guy's coming back. He's got guns. And uh, that's where we're at. And here's the pinup for that. Tim Lynn did this for the, uh, for the first volume. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, the circle is very important for writing. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that. Uh, and that's it. Uh, I think I know a group that might enjoy that page more than others. Interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, at least you can shower without shorting out. That's pretty funny. Um, there we go. So that's, that is issue three and that completes my volume one analysis for real. Yeah. I use Tim and Sashi as much as I possibly can. I love these guys. They're, they're, they're uh, beautiful people and they draw the most beautiful art, um, out there. So Absolutely love it. Yeah, we get bunnies on, on everything because that's just how it goes. So I hope that was useful. Like, there's not as much in issue three where it's like, you know, I'm pointing out, I guess, uh, you know, what's going on. Because like I said, this is much more of an action-driven issue. And I wanted to really close out strong, like with this car chase and going on. Uh, Metagirl fails in finding the villain. They're really, they're really struggling to find their identities, figure out who they are as characters. And figure out their relationship and that's what that's what I want to impart as the most important part of this because the characters are what matter here I mean you can read any superhero book and see a fight and and see you know 50 pages of fight and like you know every superhero book has that and it's it's not all that interesting I often skip over those pages unless there's like something like unique about it um, so I try to keep those I try to keep my fights like you know three to five pages um, and then I try to keep uh, the actual narrative of what's going on to develop the characters going uh, for the rest of it. And so uh, I, I hope that comes across as as better than most people's other writing. I think it's better than most people's other writing, at least. Um, and I think because I come from a novelist background, um, I end up building that characterization a lot deeper than you see in a lot of comic books. And that is uh, what I want to do here. So uh, if you like it, please back Flying Sparks. Uh, if, if you just want to check it out uh, and you weren't paying too much attention to the commentary, that's cool too. Um, as you see, Jethro's art's really pretty. Uh, so that works out too. And it just gets better with every single volume. Um, I, I, this this uh, third volume just really steps up the art game as much as I, I think it steps up the writing game too. So that should be enjoyable for you guys. Um, any questions before I head off here? I'm just going to go eat dinner, I guess, uh, before we do this. Um, but that's it. I uh, see that Drake uh, just finished Justified. Going to leave a five star review. Thank you for that. Justified is uh, my current novel that just came out, and it's kicking butt and taking names. The sales are phenomenal for it. Still hanging up there. Um, yeah, I, I not only had my top release where it like hit the top on Amazon that I've um, that I've uh, seen for all my books, but it, it's lingered a lot longer too. Um, it's really stayed at the top of the charts a lot longer than all of my other books. So i um, excited to see this series continue. Uh, my second book in that series will come out October 3rd. So we're actually coming up on that pretty close. And uh, yeah, we're just, uh, we're, just, we're just cranking out books and making everybody happy who reads because that's what we do around here. So that's my goal. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to hope to get Flying Sparks 3 shipped hopefully end of October. Um, so we can launch that Dynamite Thor uh, Kickstarter in November. 
Um, and th then I'll have, you know, three graphic novels and, or th I guess four graphic novels at that point out, uh, three for this series, and then a, a side comic out for that, and hopefully another side comic in issue number zero. Um, so we're producing a ton of content. We're, we're doing this. this is, we're having a real comic business out of this, and we're being a real replacement industry, trying to create books that you can talk about uh, regularly, because if you can't get the discussion going, you're never going to change culture. And if you only come out with a book a year or a book every two years, uh, you're never you're never going to really impact culture in this environment like that. So it's all about keeping this going. Um, right now, we are 100 percent funded. We're double. We're 200 percent funded. Um, we are here. Uh, twelve three five four. My actual break even cost on this is about uh, twelve five hundred. So we're we're definitely going to get there. Um, so yeah, that that covers all my art. The comics are not that sexy, guys. They covers all my art. Covers all my printing. Covers all the weird items that you guys made me uh, produce um, in order to uh, to to get this done. And um, at that point, that's this is when I start seeing any returns for all the time I I put into this. So um, yeah. Every, everything after 12500 is pretty much gravy for me but you know for the amount of hours i put in this it's not not a <laughs> not a huge lucrative deal but it does allow me to keep putting these comics out and uh you know i'm i want to tell the story and i want to keep it going so as long as you guys get it to this point every time i'll keep putting these out and that's 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 the truth of this and hopefully uh over the course of things people are going to see that um that this is this is the best indie superhero comic out there with the best storyline, deepest characters. And, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm hoping more people will find this and tune in every time we, we put one of these out. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed uh, the sort of commentary on issue three. Sorry, it was a little lighter than issue one and issue two. But uh, that is what it is for that. Some, some issues are going to be a little more dense. Some issues are going to be lighter. And I'll continue this. Um, I'm not going to do volume two right now. I want people to read volume two. I feel like um, a lot of people didn't uh, read volume two yet, or I, I just don't see any discussion about it like I did about uh, volume one, which is weird. It, it unsettles me. I don't know if you guys like the book or not. Um, but uh, I want to make sure people just read volume two. And so I'll, I'll do the commentary like this for volume two once we get into the volume four campaign. And that way, uh, you know, that way everybody's had time to catch up and, and we're reading old issues really to, uh, to, I don't know, give a little depth to everything and remind everybody what happened with the books. So that's it. Uh, have a good night, guys. This is the Saturday. Please back the book. Please subscribe on YouTube. Hit the like button, all that. Um, and uh, again, like these books, it's all for you. It's, uh, it, it's all for the reading enjoyment. So this is what it's about. I hope you come in and, uh, and check out volume three. Thank you very much, everybody. And I will be back Monday with a lunch stream. I think I got a new author who's got a new book out on, on Monday that we're going to bring on and, uh, and uh, check his stuff out. All right. Talk to you soon.